Hey, what's up, everybody? One Peg here. So last night we did the dev Q&A up until like the, the late night for me. And I got the full dev Q&A up on the uh, the YouTube channel. So if you guys want to go and check out the full dev Q&A, if you want to see all the little like intricacies and nuance, by all means, go nuts. This video is going to serve as a summary of that Q&A. It was a little over two hours, so I'm going to try and keep this as short as I possibly can. The biggest piece of information, uh, well, there were two, two large pieces, things that were anticipated for the wipe, most of which... Are happening some of which is not going to make it in although i think that one of them really wasn't something that we should have been planning on just because of how things have been going as a reminder uh sdf and the guys at iron mace uh they are finding themselves in court pretty often right now to uh to have to deal with the nexon iron mace lawsuit in south korea uh they have another court date pending in like the next week where sdf has to appear so that has unfortunately taken up a bunch of his time and they they made mention of that a few different times which has kept him from being able to be like at an actual dev console and like working on a couple of things that they wanted to have in the game by now that being said uh on to the the summary so so where we are right now is there was just a hotfix that was put out that took away the chris dagger from warlocks and brought multi-class back for some reason who knows uh they brought back multi-class for a week this is like kind of a week gap and then at the end of this week they will have the wipe on september 6th and then uh, there's going to be about a two week gap of time and then they're going to bring the leaderboard back online for the new season that's because kind of how they've done it uh, the, the last season and the season before kind of seemed like it coincided there was one time when they brought it back and then the season started right away but it seemed like it was kind of a slam job so a little bit little bit weird I think the idea is they're trying to get people like an opportunity to gear up and then they're going to throw people into HR with whatever the new AP system ends up being uh, but more on that in a minute so the big stuff is that they're bringing ruins back the ruins rework happened uh they say that it's still going to be the ruins. You're going to recognize some of the modules. A lot of the key modules are still in, but there's going to be some new ones, things that we hadn't seen before. There's also going to be two bosses on the map and some new extracts, the new extract types. And there's also going to be a different form of like, like round ending, like storm mechanic that is going to be unique to the ruins map. Ruins will not be standalone. The ruins map is going to be uh, the first of three levels. So the thing that they said that they were fighting with is the idea of having ruins be another standalone map with four separate queues on a round robin schedule like we had with the other three maps that already existed. But the concern was is that it would be like too long of a wait between the four maps if that's what you wanted to do. So their temporary solution or the thing that they're going to try to attempt is to put ruins as a one of three. So it's going to go ruins and then crypts and then inferno. This is also going to tie into the matchmaking system at some point in the future where they're going to have matching getting done between levels. Obviously that's going to come down to having to tweak player counts and how populated the maps are going to be between those level changes and whatnot. Um, and then speaking of the level changes, the new vendor that exists, the Express Man, the Express Man being what they are, not giving people enough time to be able to like trade with them and move items and pay for those uh, the services, that is intentional. Uh, SDF said you don't want to be the last person in there, and he said like lore-wise, canon-wise, the tradesman needs to get out of the dungeon too, which is why uh, they don't give you all that much time to be able to like move the items. They also said that for people that are looking at AP-related stuff, giving items to the tradesman does not count for AP. It's only going to count whatever you have on you. So there's that. They also said with the cross-server matching between levels is going to have a little bit of difficulty because they obviously have to take like gear score considerations into account for like normals and whatnot, but that's something that they're going to have to tackle. And they also worry about like regional kind of matchmaking because people are selecting certain regions of servers and they want to make sure that people have like a fluid gaming experience where there isn't a lot of like net code issues because we all know and have seen stuff that happens when people have big ping disparities next included in this next patch is going to be cat people so that is going to be a playable race it's going to be a skin on the market the gathering hall and social space is not something that's going to be included immediately uh, they are still working on it but it is one of their highest priority items and should be in the game uh, as soon as they can possibly get it done Okay, now on to Arena. Arena is going to be included in this patch. And I did a video last night that I posted for everybody just to get that little snippet of information out because this one is actually kind of big. This is probably the biggest piece of the entire patch especially with the mechanics. So they are going to include Arena as a competitive event that is going to take place on weekends. 
very similar to how the Crucible works in Destiny. So it's going to run, I would guess, from Friday through Sunday, probably based around GMT. That being said, it's going to have an MMR-based system. And the idea is, is that everyone brings in the best possible gear that they can. Now, there is a unique mechanic regarding loot for this that I thought, and most of chat at the time thought, was pretty ingenious. Now, the thought method behind this is to try and curb RMT. People cheating to get gear to then sell for real money obviously is a big, big benefit. And then people on the purchasing side of things that want to buy gear to run would obviously be something that they would have to worry about. Also, Arena is limited to legendary quality gear and below. You can't bring artifact weapons into Arena because they figure that would be kind of broken, and I kind of agree. Now, the way that the loot system works to be able to curb this is... While you adventure in the dungeon normally, any piece of gear that you either craft from the crafters or that you find and extract with out of like a treasure chest, for instance, that hadn't been like looted and claimed and taken into their stash by someone else already. When you loot an item and take it into your stash, that item will then be marked as having been collected, originally collected by you the player, whichever one of your characters was the one that collected it. So as an example, if I find a crystal ball on my uh, warlock common one peg W and get out with that item, that crystal ball that I found in a treasure chest or took off of a mob will then be marked as collected by one peg. I can then put that on my character to go into arena if I go into Arena with that Crystal Ball specifically, that Crystal Ball is no longer lootable in Arena because I was the one that either crafted or discovered it, if that makes sense. So if I have a full set of gear on that was collected by me in the run, that gear set, the entire set of gear, is not lootable. Conversely, if any of that gear that I got was from, like, say, Enboss or Jay or one of those guys gave me a necklace and I wore that into Arena and I died, that necklace would be lootable because I wasn't the one that got it originally. Which means that on the RMT side of things, if there's a guy that bought all of their gear kit and went into Arena and died, it's going to be pretty telling to be able to you know, see that they didn't have you know, any, any gear that they got themselves right? So it's still worth it to check bodies. It incentivizes people to play the game, right? To progress quests and whatnot. And then through that quest progression, unlocking crafts. And there's more on, on that in a second with the affinity system. So account-wide affinity for merchants is going to be a thing now. There's a couple of caveats with this too. So what this will do is it will allow any character in your account, the moment that you unlock a certain level of trader, loyalty, affinity, reputation, however you want to think about it, once that level is achieved, it will be achieved account-wide. So if my Warlock main went through the quest chains and got um, Frostone Crafts on the Armorsmith, every single one of my characters will have Frostone Crafts on the Armorsmith. Now I obviously expressed concern about having nine characters suddenly be able to make all of the highest tier quality gear that I possibly could at any given moment in time and make 9x grim smiles every half hour and most of chat I think agreed with me on that one because it would really mess up the economy of the game and and we kind of tried to or made mention of looking into the idea of making it like an account wide cooldown for for these crafts but this ties into the arena thing so for instance if I have a druid and I wanted to try and make like craftable purple like like uh, ruby, silver, whatever for my druid, uh, it, I could craft those items on my druid, and because the druid was the one that crafted them, they would have those items as collected by, right? If that makes sense. Right now, that is per character. So on the arena side, if my druid crafted an item that was going to be best suited for my warlock, it's going to say that it was crafted, created by my druid, collected by my druid, not my warlock. So it's not account bound in its current iteration. I don't know if they're going to change that to make it account wide, but for the time being, it's only like per character. The affinity, though, will be across the board. Now, threshold for affinity. If I do a quest on the Armorsmith and I get the first affinity reward, the first 25 points that gets me like, you know, green quality gear off of the Armorsmith, like I do the ruby silver turn in, that ruby silver gear, the ruby silver ore turn in that gets me the affinity level only is a valued once. So I can only get that like one time. I can't go across like nine characters and hand in all the ruby silver across like all nine characters and then suddenly have max trade value. Like it doesn't work like that. So it's only going to count the one time, but it will be account wide. 
which is huge for crafting and obviously huge for the squire because that means that every character if i make an alt that alt character will suddenly have the ability to use like white quality gear once i achieve it across all of my characters like that's that's a big change. So I think that's a huge dub. I like that a lot. And, then, and it's not going to overwrite quests. Quests are not going to be account-wide either, by the way. Quests are going to be individualized. So that way you can still do the goblin quests, like the first six goblin quests, and get the gold bag on every one of your characters as much as you want to do it. And I think that's I think that's good. Sorcerer will not be in this wipe. It's just not going to be. It's not ready. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the of the thing, this is kind of like SDF's baby, and because of all the court dates and distractions that he had and them trying to push out like the ruins rework, etc., unfortunately, it got pushed. SDF wants to just like lock himself in an office for two days and tell everyone to go away and like really knock out the majority of what he's got in his head. It's, uh, I guess, roughed in, but he's got to like work out the fine details and make sure that things work. Um, and obviously, he has uh, an another guy that works as co-director with him where they're working on like these little bits. But but because he's not in the office due to having to get drug away to court and other focuses that he's got to do administratively, he just hasn't been able to like get it done. Now he's confident that he'll be able to do it as a mid wipe edition. However, my my knee jerk on this is to think that it probably won't be something we will see until next season. That being said, druid forms will not come in. The new druid forms will not come in until after sorcerer is done. So it's it's quite literally a lineup. So sorcerer first then druid forms and and also the inventory system and quivers and that kind of thing are also kind of in that line that sdf and and terry are hands-on and hands in in terms of getting it done okay in terms of religion the religion system is a little bit of a of a like rp uniquity the idea is is that it's going to be designed around like just fun rp kind of stuff for the moment there is no like visual identifier that says what religion each person is. They've considered giving like a, like each religion its own emote to be able to like visually identify each other should that need arise. But for the time being, it's kind of like turn on VoIP and then talk to each other and be like, hey, are you Noxalon? Cause I'm Noxalon. And then, you know, if you're not, then you kill each other is, is kind of the idea. Now you could, people could do that or could not, you know, whatever. Uh, and then there's going to be like some small amount of benefit. The, uh, the test server that showed all the luck values for each rank are just placeholders. That's not something something to like hang your hat on they're talking about like maybe adding like tenths of a percent of like armor value and stuff like that for people that get like max rank or something might give like 0.5 or less percent like armor rating or you know something along those lines like extremely extremely minimal benefit as a as a blessing goes now what they did say is like the stat screen is something that they're not going to update in real time one of the tabs showed a bunch of stats for the religion uh, in terms of like other faction members that you've killed versus faction members like your own faction members they said that it might be something that they show you at the end of wipe just to go like look how many people of your like your own people that you killed you know you monsters just to like as a funny kind of thing uh, but that's really it it's kind of just like an rp like for funsies uh another angle to, to cause people to just want to kill each other i guess okay in terms of ap system the ap system for the new wipe is being changed but we're not sure by specifically what amount or how the modus operandi for the current patch is that it this current season is it was never easier has never been easier to grind ap in the game than now ever um they they buffed the kill values for pve and then left in all the treasure stuff once they changed it back like it was just such an easy farm and then it got easier when they introduced skull tokens because those things were just worth an absurd amount of ap so like getting demigod was was pretty pretty cake especially if you played a warlock and you knew how to use flame path it was just simple so they say that they're going to revamp it for this current patch the the one that's coming out for the white the new season will have a revamped ap system now remember that the current the, the new season isn't going to start until a couple of weeks in so they have like three weeks or so to tweak whatever the finalized values for the ap system are going to be but the idea is more so to lean into uh, value for pvp not really giving anything for like general like trash minion pv E kills so if you kill like skeletons and stuff it doesn't really matter they're looking at more heavily weighting mini bosses bosses and then the larger treasure chests they're also looking at kind of like killing the value of taking out like treasure or uh gear items that kind of thing because really it just came down to them or people players focusing on that grind like just grabbing things out of boxes so they want to make it more about like the effort and act of actually like playing the game and beating the harder content so it's it's more around like 
mini bosses, bosses, and then each other is going to kind of kind of be the primary focus. And then something having to do with like the larger, like more rewarding treasure chests and opening them. And then in terms of the grind rewards for the leaderboard, historically, they haven't been shown until several weeks, halfway-ish in between the beginning of the leaderboard and the end of the leaderboard. So we don't really know or hadn't really known until partway through what those rewards were going to be. And then there are people that would wait until they saw that motivation before they decided whether or not they wanted to start or not. And I think that's valid. They said that as they grow as a company and get their processes more streamlined, the idea would be that they're trying to make the rev the revelation, the revealing of those rewards earlier in that timeline. Hopefully we can get to the point where it shows up at the beginning so we know exactly what we're getting for the season. I think that would be a very, very big, big W of a change. I made a question to the devs about uh, fishing and uh, maybe other in-game like crafting systems like brewing or you know something that people could do in raid to be able to craft items. Uh, he said that fishing is going to be released but probably not until next season. He didn't really make mention of any of the other crafting systems that people had ideas for. So then I asked a question about the second layer of goblin caves. If there was going to be like an inferno level goblin caves or like a, like a fungal king or a goblin king or like a giant spider or something along those lines. Um, and Terry laughing said that SDF was sitting next to him like nodding his head and going like, hmm. So I, I believe it's something that they want to do. They're trying to get to the end of this legal battle. It seems like the, uh, the legal dispute that they have between Nexon might be coming to a close pretty soon here which you know fingers crossed that they come out relatively unscathed but they are talking about adding uh, a second layer to goblin cave obviously there's no timeline on this but it doesn't look like it's out of the question it could definitely be something that we see in the future and i think that would be pretty cool man i'd like to i'd like to see like a like a harder boss that you need a team to beat or something like that uh is an inferno gc level i think it would be pretty sweet and then i asked about artifact armors they said that artifact armors uh for now their thought process is that every weapon in the game should have an artifact variant there should be some named weapon for each weapon in the game uh, maybe even shields who knows that will have some uh, you know amount of value to it there should be uh, one of those first and then they'll work on having like artifact armor pieces which i think would be pretty cool uh, currently sdf is the person creating all of the artifact armors and weapons and whatnot so that is one other thing that is on his list of to-do items in a prior uh q a the last q a that i did with them i asked them about roaming like named unique monsters they made mention of that terry did specifically they didn't get into specifics but terry kind of chuckled with like a little like you know n n wink and a nod kind of thing saying like there's something like that that's going to be in this patch but he did not elaborate like i mentioned like a treasure goblin he said the treasure goblin no maybe in the future something that they're working on but something else is going on with this and i don't know exactly what but it seems like there's going to be like monster roaming now i'm wondering if maybe they're giving monsters the ability to like open doors or something which would be kind of crazy but for now it looks as though they're they're working on getting to that end goal of having like named like roaming unique monsters or mini bosses something like that and i look forward to it they there's something that they're doing i don't know exactly what it is but there's something the socketing system the gem system is not going to be in the game for this wipe it's getting pushed in favor of trying to get arena out for this uh this coming wipe so that hopefully will be next season maybe mid-season again this is one of those things that is on sdf's list so it seems as though sdf and terry are kind of and they chuckled about this sdf and terry are kind of the bottleneck is kind of like the main idea here from a from a consumerist perspective it looks like they just they need help so maybe like there's some talented guys that could kind of help with the workload a little bit and work with them a little bit more. I don't know. And then we did like a Q&A uh, section where it was like questions from the audience and like suggestions and whatnot, things to like bring to their attention. So uh, currently summons like the Hydra and Treant, the uh, Hydra Treant and the traps from Hunters, kills with those things do not count for anyone's character sheet. So for instance, if you needed to kill um, a Wendigo and the Treant gets the Wendigo kill, that doesn't count for the Druid that summoned the Treant. That is a bug. Terry and SDF both said that that was a bug. So they should be bringing that back in so that they do give credit for Hydra Treant and, and Hunting Traps. This is going to get fixed, is what they said. I did send a message to SDF asking about whether Hunting Traps were supposed to be doing true damage or not. Uh, he has not responded to that as of now, so I'm not sure yet. They said that there's going to be a more detailed uh, end of raid screen at some point in the future. It's something that they want to do, but again, is on the list of to-do items that SDF and Terry are most responsible for. Wands are also on the list for SDF that is bottlenecked, unfortunately. 
currently, but that hopefully will be in the game at some point in the near future. And then asked a question about, like, say, several years down the line, if uh, replacing the Unreal Store assets with their own in-house, like, baked-in assets is going to be something that they want to do. Uh, they said that it's not really something that they believe to be cost-effective for them, uh, at least in the near future. Um, maybe years down the line, but it's not really something they've even considered. I asked them about uh, weapon skins. So one of the hurdles that they have with weapon skins is obviously making like different grades, qualities of those weapon skins so that it reflects, you know, the degradation of the item, depending on if it's gray up through like legendary quality status. Um, those weapon skins are something that they said that they want to do. And I think it would make really good sense for them to do it if they possibly can from a monetization standpoint. Obviously having people in house that could do like modeling and whatnot to be able to make custom weapon skins like that would be huge. It's just a matter of whether or not they could get it done. Now, they, they obviously want to put more effort into that. They're trying to do some quality of life features like the revamping of the shop and whatnot to make it a little bit more user friendly. And then the next thing that they're trying to focus on from monetization and that kind of standpoint is trying to streamline the process for people to be able to upgrade the edition from like the free to play edition to like the paid edition of the game. Because right now it's a it's a several step process and it's not intuitive. And I agree with that. So I asked them about like quality of life things. So like you right click a, an item in your inventory to be able to go to the market and look up that item with uh like key stats and whatnot should you so choose and he said it's something that uh they would like to be able to do um they're working on a price graph and analytical comparison for a history of sales for that item to be seen in game so that you could take a look at like what the average sale prices are for certain kinds of things i think that would be a huge quality of life addition would be really nice but it's something obviously it's going to take them a bit of time terry did say though that he likes the idea of reducing the number of clicks that are required to take these and make these kinds of actions and then asked if there was an option to be able to change the character name or could they give us an option to be able to change our character name without losing fame for some kind of a cost and he said that they have plans for that but there's a technical hiccup with the character name um, and changing it it's 100 planned as a thing though Okay, for those of you that didn't realize, Otto is now the dog uh, next to the Express Man. Otto has grown up. He's a big boy now. For those of you that don't know, Otto is representative of an IRL dog that is actually Terry's sister's dog. Uh, the idea being that uh, they put the dog in because I guess the rumor is is that Terry's sister lended them money, like the original money that they needed to be able to like really get uh, Iron Mace up and running so that they could have the dev studio and whatnot. So as a as a thank you, they put Otto in the game to, you know, I don't know, re represent that as a, as a thank you to his sister for doing that. So Otto obviously is not going to be a puppy forever. He's a puppy in our hearts, but he has grown up and he's the, now the dog next to the express man. Uh, the tavern, they're talking about like having uh, cats or something in, in the tavern um, for, for that social space. So if you want to give Otto the pets, He'll be next to the express man in between the levels of the dungeon as you're going down. Okay, then the tainted heart, the tainted heart item, the uh, the max level or the demigod item for this season. People have been asking, like, what is that thing? Uh, the tainted heart is your soul heart. That's what it's going to be. The idea was is that uh, they're trying to make it look cool for people so that it, when it's like held in their hand, it'll look cool and unique and interesting. But he said right now uh, on the modeling side of thing, it does not look cool. So they're trying to make it look cool. And they said that they have a week to uh, to figure that out. So whatever the finalization for that is going to be, then mm, we'll see. People have been requesting another emote wheel or a larger emote wheel. They said that that's something that they're working on. It's on the table. So hopefully soon we'll be able to use more emotes. That would be pretty sweet. They are not revealing the stats for the skeleton champion skin. They told us that the skeleton champion skin in the game um, that you get for Pathfinder from this season's leaderboard is something that is going to be a surprise. We'll have to find out when we get it. Um, I then asked about windless crossbows. So there's a thing where people are like a hot swapping crossbows out of their inventory into their main hand and it's faster right now to equip a new windlass versus reloading the windlass. People are bringing like four of them into the dungeons. Uh, they said that the balancing for windlasses, uh, SDF was in the background nodding, saying that that is, that is coming and probably they're going to make the uh, the equip time for a windlass take longer or something, something like that. I don't know, damage penalty for you know a certain amount of time after you put the windlass on, I, I don't know. But they said that there's going to be some balance changes with like hot swapping uh, windless crossbows and crossbows uh, i made mention of the uh the halberd uh, damage issues and the crystal sword damage issues on certain swings in the combo the uh, hitboxes aren't there like on handle hits and stuff so they're going to i guess look at that and fix it they said that they knew exactly where that was and they were going to take care of it okay and then i then made mention of the issue of people being like super close to someone and being able to stab uh past the shield 
block plane, which is something that a lot of people were getting frustrated with, with daggers and whatnot. They said that this has been a known issue for a while. Uh, SDF and the co-director for Iron Mace uh, created that code themselves for the blocking mechanics. They know and understand the issue and they are working on fixing that. Okay, so the talent tree and subclass system is also being pushed back a bit. Uh, basically, the big, the big pillars of things that they're working on right now is the social space, uh, the PvP arena, and the uh, the class and dungeon side. All of those things are being worked on in terms of like balance and underutilized talents and perks to try and make something that seems like uh, the underutilized things are more uh, desirable, usable. They said that those things are primarily going to be addressed from a dev focus perspective. Those three items are going to be the dev focus for the foreseeable future until they're relatively complete or completed and then they would go back to looking at subclasses and talent trees and multi-classing in regard to the three-layer dungeon from ruins to uh crypts down to inferno uh, there was the question about uh the three-layer map system and loot and loot quality he did say that the loot is going to be revamped a little bit to make it a bit more desirable for each layer that you move through and one of the big complaints this season was that crypts loot and inferno loot were relatively similar there was a very very slight increase in the quality of loot drops that came from inferno in a, only a very short list of items that were inferno only if you want to think about it that way an ice abyss only like legendary quality gems the royals he said that uh they they're going to modify that and they're going to make the loot in the deeper levels of the dungeons more desirable is more or less what we got told by how much we have no idea but I look forward to seeing what that's going to be. As a closing remark, what they did say, and they reminded us of this, is that there's going to be about a three-week gap from the beginning of the season until when Arena comes out. They believe that what they would want to do when Arena comes out as a celebratory event is have some type of community-driven uh, tournament for the Arena when it comes out, and I think that would be pretty cool to see. Maybe we'll have like a Twitch Rivals event or something along those lines. That would be actually kind of awesome. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. Thanks so much for coming and checking out the video. If you'd be so kind as to sub the channel here, if you're still here, that would be really, really sweet. As always, you can check me out over at twitch.tv slash onepeg, where I'm usually live around 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, or earlier most days. You can follow me on Twitter over at onepegmg, or come by the Discord, discord.gg slash onepeg. And otherwise, if none of those things work, then I suppose I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for lending me your eyeballs, everyone. I'll see you real soon. Peace. <laughs>